God's fullness filling us isn't just so that we can go to church and have a good day. God's fullness is not so we can just have ministries. God's fullness isn't just so that we can have Christian concerts. God's fullness is actually to know Him in everything that He is. And so we have the ability to actually know Him. And I can know Him more today than I did yesterday. Because yesterday I knew Him a lot, but this morning I woke up with Him. And I got into His Word, and I got to pray, and I got to talk to Him, and I got to hear Him talk to me. When you see what right standing with God means, you will see what righteousness is. And when you see what righteousness is, you start to understand what the cross is and that God is for you and not against you. And greater is He that's in you than anything in this world. He didn't just die for me to get there. He died for me to destroy hell here. The mission statement of a Christian isn't just to breeze by, just go to church, listen to worship music, have a Christian bumper sticker. When you give your life to Him, the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead comes to dwell in you. The same one that devils fear, that are petrified of. They're petrified that you'd ever find out who you are in Christ and who Christ is in you. Everybody that you walk by is eternal, man. Everybody that you see is headed somewhere. They're either going to spend eternity with God or eternity away from God. And we have the ability to cross their path and make it the way. I need to have fellowship with Him, the love of the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion in the Holy Ghost, the communion of the Holy Spirit. He's not a mist. He's not a vapor. He's not out there. He wants to come and reside here. He wants to possess you from the inside out. You gotta see this picture of this car. This is my car, January 10th, Jesus saved me and I'm not paralyzed. And um, six surgeries, I have one more in November to get my screws taken out. And they said my concussion will last months to years. And when we said Jesus the second time, I could take my earplugs out and put my hat down. Oh, and, and, <laughs> and my headache went away. <laughs> but my headache is so bad with the drums and the cymbals and it's not. <laughs> And the sun doesn't bother and I can take my hat off. And uh, it's just my headache. Like, I'm supposed to take my meds in an hour. So this is supposed to be like the worst time yeah. every day. And not today. Yay! And it's not. And I just, it's so good. It's really hitting me. Hey, let's pray that your screws disappear. Yes, my screws, my ligaments, everything. It's just, everything heals. The screws and, are here? And my elbow. Okay. Yes. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus, God, for these screws disappearing. Please, Jesus. Then give your wholeness, God, in the name of Jesus, God. You're a merciful king. We love you. God, I thank you that she goes back to the doctor, and the doctors are astounded at recovery. They're astounded at screws disappearing, too. Jesus, we thank you, God. We love you. We give you glory and honor, God. I thank you. No more headaches. No more. Jesus, I thank you for complete wholeness, God, in her body. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. I'm going to preach this from the rooftops. I'm going to preach it from the mountaintops. I'm going to shout to the Lord. I'm going to shout out to God with a voice of triumph. I'm going to lift his name up. Why? Because death, where is your sting? It's done. It's finished. We are supposed to be living martyrs for Christ. We are supposed to have already lost our head and given everything to the King of glory. We're not supposed to hold anything back from him. We're not supposed to let the devil get away with murder, man. And that's what he's doing. Yesterday, we're praying for somebody and their tumor disappeared right down on the field. Why? Because Jesus can. We're like, well, I don't believe it. Well, be a skeptic. Live with part of Christianity instead of the whole thing. When you stand before God, you're going to find out that you missed out on an abundant life that He paid a price for you. And I'm not talking about finances, man. I'm talking about giving Jesus the glory that's due Him. And I knew there was something going on with her midsection. I didn't know exactly what it was. And as we're praying for the mom, Jesus just starts touching her. And the presence of God just starts overwhelming her. And I know what He's doing. He's cleaning her from the inside out. And it's just so beautiful. So he just killed a tumor in your mama. Thank you. Crushed it. It's gone. Can't feel it. 
Um, That's because he's king. This new word that stuff can't exist in you anymore. You know, it's so funny because, well, maybe you don't think it's funny. I That's the happiest CAT scan ever in the world. You tell the doctor the new physician. They need to know his name. said I was going to have surgery. Oh, they need to know his name. Tell him you had surgery right in the middle of creation. She kind of steps away. She's like, what? Whoa, how did you know that stuff? I'm a third hell and back. That's right. And I'm still here, right? You went to and hell and back. back. You're back now. I have this record out. That's right. So many people don't even believe in healing. I do. Have something disappear and then tell me I don't believe in it. Sorry. No more. So she stepped away and she goes, oh my God. Oh my God, it's not there. And she starts feeling for this tumor that she had that's not there that she had to go for a CAT scan for. Even Miss Beth, the um, doctor at the medical center, said I would have to have surgery and it's gone. It's not there. I had a huge knot yesterday. It was getting bigger and bigger. And you could feel it. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. She said it's like a hernia and it's separating and my stomach is coming out from it and it's not there. It is not there because it was it was getting bigger and bigger. And I, and I had you, to- You could tell, it's your own body. You can, well, you yeah, can that's it, why right? I was like- Yeah. Okay, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. And he knew it. He was saying about my blood and and because my blood work came back not good and and everything that I've been through my whole life and him and I reconnecting. It's just so awesome. I got the woo. Oh, honey, you have no idea what just happened. How did you know that? Because Jesus knows everything. It's done. You watch and see. You go back to the doctors. It's gone. I'm not kidding you. You feel warmth go the whole way through. I promise he annihilated that. He'll never come back. You watch and see, because you're not a woman that's marked by your past. You're a woman that's been marked by the cross. Man, she's not going to have to have surgery because Jesus did surgery right here on the field at Creation Festival with 20,000 people, and this lady gets touched by Jesus. And God wants to use all of us and he wants to flow through all of us in the same way. I'm not some Christian superstar. I am a son that knows who his father is. I have the same spirit in me that raised Jesus from the dead and he wants to quicken our mortal body. Jesus healed the sick. He didn't do what he did as God. He did what he did as the son of man possessed by God. When he came to this earth, he had to humble himself, become a bondservant, was tempted at all points, yet without sin. The Bible says it's impossible for God to be tempted, nor can God tempt. Jesus had to fulfill the covenant so that we could enter into the new covenant. And the new covenant is what Jesus paid a price for us to receive, where our sins and our lawless deeds, he'd remember no more. When Jesus prayed for the sick, he said in John 5, 19, the son can do nothing of himself. What he does, he does because the father does it. For what the father does, the son does in like manner. So what he's saying is he so limited himself and he was, he was just like you and I. He became the son of man, born of the Virgin Mary, fully God and fully man, but laid his divinity aside while he was on this earth so that he could model what a Christian life would look like when you're fully possessed by God. People say, well, Jesus had no sin, and that's why he could do all the miracles. Well, how much sin does the blood of Jesus cover? Some or all. The blood of Jesus covers all of our sin and has taken our sin away, forgiving us and taking it all away. That means that the same spirit lives in us and the sin problem has been solved through Jesus. It doesn't mean that we can't sin. We can, we just don't want to because we're in fellowship with the Father. So Jesus relied fully upon the Holy Spirit for every miracle that happened in his life. Jesus, being the King of glory, humbled himself, became a man, was filled with the Holy Spirit at the baptism at the River Jordan when the Holy Spirit came down, rested upon him, was completely possessed by the Holy Holy Spirit in union and communion with God and the same communion is available for every believer today. I want you to step out and I want you to pray for somebody today. Approach one person and ask them if you can pray. Will you do that? Who will do that today? Holy Spirit, have your way. God, let them witness and let them share their faith. Let miracles, signs and wonders flow through every person here. God, let them just step out. When they see a crutch, when they see a cane, when they see a wheelchair, if they see uh, anything, a shoulder, anything, and someone's hurting their back, just say, hey, can I pray for you? When you see that you're loved by a perfect father, all fear has to leave. All fear has to leave. There's a time when you have to make a choice. And the choice isn't, I choose to go to church. The choice is, I choose to surrender 
this whole life to Jesus. You can go to church your whole life and still not know him. You can be a Christian for 50 years and never pick up your Bible. You are supposed to give your life fully to God so that you can make a difference in this world, so that you can be a disciple, so that you can represent Jesus. And the kingdom comes with everything, all the resources available in order for you to further his kingdom and not yours. Every bit of pain, get out. We cancel you in Jesus' name. Really check it, it should be gone. I don't feel any pain whatsoever. Should be really gone. Really check it again. Should be gone completely. I don't feel any pain. It's not coming back. I promise. It's gone. It won't come back. I'm serious. And you know, people tell you that the miracles aren't for today, yet it's in your Bible. Who gives you the right to tear that out? Why would you think you have the right to tear that stuff out just because you didn't see it happen? How dare you lower the Word of God down to your experience? Because my Bible says in Psalms 138 verse 2 that you, O Lord, have magnified your Word above your own name. So God has magnified His Word and His truth above His own name. So anytime you take your experience and magnify your experience above His Word, you're magnifying your experience above the Father. And we're walking through and I see this kid and he looks at me and every time he prays, God doesn't answer him. He never gets answers to his prayer, figures God doesn't care about him. And so he's like, how can this happen, man? How come Jesus didn't protect him? I said, because he didn't give him the whole house. How do you give your whole house to Jesus? And I asked him if he's ever been born again. Have you ever given your life to Jesus? Okay, have you surrendered to God? Have you asked Jesus to come and live inside of you? Okay, you better begin there. So your answer is to be born again. And then the Holy Spirit will transform you from the inside instead of from the outside in. So do you want Jesus to possess your whole house? And he says, yes. God wants you, but he wants all of you. Are you ready to give your life to him? Come on, stand up with me, pray. You say this with me, Jesus, Jesus I, believe I believe that you died for my sin, that you died for my sin and that you raised from the dead for me to have life. And I have sinned and, I have sinned and fallen and short. The presence of God just touched him and filled him. Yo, when you was praying, man, like, it felt like this coldness just like, I, don't even, I can't even describe it. It just like went all through my body. I don't even know what it was. You know what it is? God just moved in. He don't live out here. He lives in here. Oh, that is crazy. So all your answers, your questions you're asking me, that's the answer. Now you have a relationship inside. I didn't come to you in you know, persuasive words or human wisdom, but I came to you that you would put your faith in the wisdom of God and the power of God. And so he says fear and trembling in this because in our weakness, God is strong. Because Jesus wants to change you from the inside. That's how you surrender. You say, here I am, I'm yours. Your spirit is born again. Your spirit and Holy Spirit just became one. So now he wants to teach you and train you and show you what that means. And the Bible will open up to you like you've never seen it before. And He will transform your life, man. If I want to start reading the Bible, what would you recommend? Ephesians. To you? Ephesians. Colossians. Today, I was up there at Woods One. And I brought him up because I wanted him to share his heart. He starts sharing his heart on what happened. And it was a setup because I had planned on sharing 1 Corinthians. In our weakness, God is strong. So I read through it and actually shared the reality of the gospel and asked how many people out there had not come to Christ and had not given him the whole house and had not been born again. It was an unscheduled meeting in Woods One area and probably 1,500 people showed up today in the woods because people are hungry and a whole bunch of people got born again. It was so good. And then uh, we, just, we just prayed for people to actually receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is coming and he's gonna to touch you right now and he's gonna cover you and smear you with his power. You get baptized in water, if you haven't, it's very important, I know they're doing that I think at three o'clock. When you go down into that water, you come back up and the Holy Ghost midwife is there saying, look father, a brand new baby. Because you break the water, just like a mama breaks the water when she gives birth. But right now, God wants to clothe you with power. 
One girl that I actually saw in the one meeting that was standing up there, she actually never gave her life to Jesus. She was wrapped up in witchcraft. She stood up to say yes to Jesus. Well, when she stood up to say yes to Jesus, she hit the ground because that devil wanted to keep her bound, that witchcraft thing. And I hear her screaming after the meeting. Hey guys. It's okay. The Holy Spirit doesn't share the house, man. He takes the whole house over, and that's amazing. So they were over there trying to comfort her and trying to get this thing out. Holy Spirit moved in. He doesn't let anybody else stay there. That's right. You hear me? God's a great dad. He's going to show you what it's like to have a great father. This whole thing, it's not allowed to throw you on the floor. It's not allowed to shake you anymore. Look at me. You hear me? It's not allowed to. You hear me? We're teaching people their authority, so they're just learning that they have authority. They're trying to shout at the spirit to get it to leave. We don't shout at a spirit. Shouting at a spirit doesn't make it leave. Jesus didn't shout at a spirit. Jesus said, just come out. Look at me. Hey. Hey. Stop. It's enough. I'm not allowed to throw you around. And so went over there, just loved on her and spoke life into her and she gets completely free. So what's happening right now is the Holy Ghost just kicks everything out. Like for real. <laughs> like for real. Let her go. Let her go. Look at me. I'm proud of you. Can I give you a hug? Well, I'm down here. You okay with that? Come on, give me a hug. Because she's been into all kind of witchcraft and stuff. They brought her there. She just gave her life to Jesus today. Just there. Just there. So when the Holy Ghost comes in, that thing just can't stay. Lots of people got healed. Lots of people got saved. Lots of people got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And lots of people were out here around the festival praying for people. With praying for people, 50% is way better than 100% because you were in a lot of pain. But this, whenever you pray for somebody and you walk away, just believe that God started it and he'll finish it. And maybe God just, there's one right now, but maybe throughout the time it will. Yep, I appreciate the day. He does. So, so whenever you pray for somebody, you make sure that when Jesus prayed, it always happened, right? And sometimes we want to explain why it didn't or why it, we have to always let Jesus be our model. So if Jesus touched that ankle, would it be healed? Yes. No question. Right. So he's the will of God. So we're growing in faith. You pray for somebody and you have to believe that it's God's will for that to be restored. Uh -huh. Or else maybe God didn't want it right now. If, if it wasn't in Jesus' mouth, we have to be careful to not have it be in ours. Just because like when, when I say, hey, well, maybe God's just waiting. Jesus never said it's never God's timing. Mm -hmm. He never said, hey, God's doing building character in you through this. Mm -hmm. He never said, I'd like to, but let me check God's will. Mm -hmm. Never. And he never said anything but be healed mm -hmm. every time. So that's our model all the time. Okay. So sometimes when we don't see it, we want to try to comfort somebody and give them a reason why it didn't happen. But Jesus never did it. So he's our model. Our goal was always full healing, 100% yeah. every time. Is there anybody here that needs a miracle? Any ankle injuries? Come on, let me pray for you. All right, so which ankle gives you trouble? This right one? one? Okay. Right one. All right, do you feel any kind of tension in there at all right now? A little bit, yeah. Okay, so you can feel it right now. Yeah. All right, cool. Okay, hey, will you do me a favor? Yeah. Is this your friend? Yes. Yeah. Do you believe that Jesus is king? Yes. Will you help me pray for her? Yes. Come on. Have you been taught that healing is for today? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, good. Because a lot of people that are here, they don't, they're like, well, we don't mess with that. Because it doesn't require demonstration. But when I say that God wants to heal you, then if we pray, it needs to happen. That's all. Because the pressure is off of us because we're just Christians mm -hmm. and we just love God. So we just say, hey, if it's in the Bible, we believe it. Mm -hmm. That's all. Cool? All right. I'm going to put my hand on your ankle. You cool with that? Yeah. You help me? Sure. Come on. All right, you gotta go a lot further down than I do because I'm like only 5'9". How tall are you? Like six foot. Wow, all right, so, so Jesus, we thank you for this ankle being completely healed. Right now, every tendon, every ligament, every cartilage, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for all of this being healed, for no pain at all, all tightness let go, all pain get out, in Jesus' name, amen. Can you move it around? Did it just pop? Yeah. Tell me what that feels like right there, right now. It hurts a little bit. Does it still hurt? Yeah. Did it get worse or better? Better. Okay. Let's do it again. I feel it. It's okay. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. 
Spirit of infirmity, let go. Ankle, be healed. Every bit of pain, get out. Right now. God, I thank you for complete healing and wholeness. In Jesus' name. God, you paid the price for this. You paid more of a price than just to get us to, get us to heaven. You paid a price for you to get inside of us, Holy Spirit. So we thank you, God, for a brand new ankle. Every bit of pain, get out right now. In Jesus' name. Check it again. What does that feel like? A lot better. Is there any pain? Can you feel any pain? No. None. No. All right. One more time. So, Father, we thank you that this never comes back. Jesus, that this injury is no longer an injury because it's been made whole. God, thank you that you love these girls with all your heart, with everything that you are. God, I thank you. I ask you to empower them, God, to walk pure, to stay pure. Jesus, to burn with a fire and a flame for you. I'm in love, man, and there ain't nothing that's going to stop it. There's nothing on this earth that's going to shut it down. The devil needs to fear when we walk into the room. When we walk into a store, the devil should be afraid. To be a real son, to be a real daughter, what does it look like? It looks like somebody that's absolutely possessed, that doesn't have a basket on their head where they're going into places. When we go to our family, we don't wear a basket on our head because they persecute us. I live this, it's constant, it never shuts down. For all of those that desire to live godly, they will suffer persecution. That is a promise from the Father. So what are we so afraid of? The Holy Ghost dwells in you and He wants to rest upon you so that you can destroy hell for a living. God, I just thank you for everyone watching this, that they would be possessed by the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, and that they wouldn't bow to any lie of the adversary, but they would believe the gospel, believe Romans 8:11 says the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, and he wants to quicken your mortal body. The kingdom of God dwells within you, is in the midst of you. It's not meat or drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Getting to heaven isn't my mission. Getting to heaven is my destination. Having getting into me so that I can destroy the works of the devil is the mission statement of every Christian. Guys, tumors disappear because of the name of Jesus. Families are restored because of the name of Jesus. Jesus is King. People become sons and daughters of a living God, and the spirit of adoption comes and cries out, Abba, Father. Give your life to Him and ask Him to possess you today. So Creation Festival, 40th year, 2018. Guys, 2019 is going to be amazing. I want to come back so that I can just raise up warriors to destroy hell for a living. Believe the gospel. It's everything. Jesus is King.